episode is brought to you by A3, a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, otherwise known as an OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant RPOs and assessor C3PAOs. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla. I will be your Get, I'll be your host and our guest <laughs> will be Ryan Bonner. And Ryan's going to talk to us about everything that we're wondering about the CMMC assessment, the actual assessment. So lots of questions around this. So how are you, Ryan? I'm doing well. Uh, it's uh, a busy week, you know, headed into the end of the year. There's there's always all sorts of regulations talk, talked about being changed or adjusted or things like that. So we're all just sort of waiting in a a sprinter's stance, ready to get off to the races if something changes. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so my name is Ryan Bonner. I'm the founder and CEO of DefCert. Uh, we're a compliance consulting organization, uh, mostly working with uh, defense contractors, state economic development groups, NIST manufacturing extension partnership programs, all the people that are trying to help the entire defense industrial base get geared up for CUI safeguarding and assessments of that process. Mm -hmm. Important stuff, good, 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 good. Okay, so speaking of that assessment, so here is our first question. So what are some of the pitfalls related to CMMC assessment that the DOD contractors should be aware of? Yeah, these are some things that we consistently will see sneak up on an organization. I think one of the first things we have to acknowledge is that there's really a staggering amount of assessment objectives uh, at CMMC level three. There's 705 assessment objectives that assessors have to collect evidence around. Uh, that's what gets you your findings. That's what gets you your result. So, uh, you know, the big surprises that organizations see is that a lot of those objectives, uh, they're more governance oriented. So that, that means that the language that they're using would be things like identified or defined, specified, documented, these are things that uh, sort of like proceed actually doing the real work. And so with so many of those objectives loaded, front loaded into that governance category, you know, there's a lot more that goes into satisfying the total practice when you get into all those different objectives. And so uh, most of the government contractors that we're working with, they're really focused on performance, doing the work. But that's maybe not all of the things you need to be able to show an assessor to to show that you're satisfying all of your practice and process maturity objectives. So that's really good that you're pointing that out because I think you're absolutely right. I think there's going to be some companies that are going to think, well, we're doing this, so we're, we should be good, right? And then they're going to miss it because they're not doing what you're saying, all of the, the pre-work, the identifying and all that kind of stuff. So that that's a good that's a good thing for everybody to be keeping in mind when you're going through getting ready for CMMC. I'm glad we pointed that out. Okay, so what are some examples of the things most contractors are missing when you validate their implementation? Yeah, so uh, some of the big things that, that consistently rear their heads, <laughs> you know, uh, policies uh, a lot of times aren't approved by management, which is uh, something that's, that's relatively straightforward to do, but it's, it's regularly being missed by organizations. So you've got that, that process maturity objective at level two, that there's, there's management commitment uh, for the policy or that there's some sort of formal management approval. So uh, if you don't have like a copy of all of your uh, policies, as an example, that are signed off on by management, that's a super easy way to show that management commitment and buy-in for the entire documented policy level of maturity. Um, another thing that we don't see a lot of either is defined roles and responsibilities on the topics of, of cybersecurity, right? So you'll have org charts, you'll have role assignments for all sorts of other things in the business, you know, for day-to-day -day operations, for quality management, for HR disputes, everything you could you could think of, but we didn't take the time to write those down for the information security program. So that's, um, that's gonna be big for assessors because if you're an assessor, you wanna know who to schedule interviews with. If you don't know who's been assigned those responsibilities, then you could be talking to completely the wrong person. Uh, it's also really important because if I've got third party service providers involved, at, you know, helping me become compliant, we should know when they've been assigned a, a really important responsibility so that we're talking to the right person at the right time. And then I would say a lot of times there's no real records of really important meetings taking place 
where certain decisions are made or things like that. So if we don't have uh, documentation of a lot of those discussions or approval processes happening, then it doesn't really raise our confidence that there's uh, there's real uh, process around some of these things. We, we don't know if we're dealing with a sort of a paper tiger document or policy or not. So when we know that they're being discussed and actively talked about, approved, there's meeting minutes, there's, there's notes being taken, that's gonna be really important as well. I can totally see that being missing from the equation because I can see a small business not thinking about this so the two big takeaways I got from that was making sure that you have some kind of a management sign-off sheet for everything, because I could see that also slipping through, not realizing you have to actually have something that says the manager signed off on this check with the manager signature on there. And then also the um, having the meetings with some minutes. And this is, you know what, this also adds to, this also adds to why this is gonna take a while to get everything organized for CMMC, because all this stuff takes time. So. The sooner you get started on getting ready for CMMC, the better off you will be. That's that's a really important point, Dana, because if if you aren't front loading the effort to get all your documentation lined up, get it into a position where it's really digestible by a third party like an assessor, they're going to have to learn a lot of these things about you in real time on site. And that's expensive. So I'd, I'd rather front load that and feed them as much examinable documentation up front. Uh, so that when the assessor does show up with their expensive assessor team, they're mostly there for just the targeted interviews and the practical demonstrations they couldn't find in a document. The other thing you pointed out, too, was having the assigned roles and everyone knowing who, who the role is assigned to, or at least knowing if they're they're the one that it's assigned to, because that's a good point, too. That's going to take more time, too, if it's like, well, who should I speak to about this? Well, I think it's got to be whoever it's going to be, blah, blah, blah. So that's a good thing, too. Defined roles. Good point. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, here is one. So what is the highway guide? Yeah, so the highway guide is something that that my team and other uh, folks in the defense industrial base have just started talking about. All the highway guide is, is it's an effort to answer the question from an assessor's perspective, how would I, how I would assess you? So that's what highway stands for. And what we're trying to do is is working with a lot of different organizations in the CMMC ecosystem uh, to take what we already have, like, you know, the CMMC assessment guide and then things that we will have soon. So the CMMC scoping guide and the CMMC assessment process and say, how does that actually feel when you put those things together and start to be a part of an assessment? So highway, which again, just how I would assess you, it's an attempt on our part to show the assessment process sort of from the perspective of an assessor. So what are they going to focus on early in the process? Uh, how, how are they going to look to satisfy specific uh, assessment objectives? What sort of critical pieces of evidence are going to consistently serve them as, as reference points in the assessment process? What are, they, what are they looking for? What do they care about? The new Department of Defense's cybersecurity program, CMMC, can be very confusing and overwhelming. A3 is a cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification. A3 builds CMMC packages and has access to a marketplace of consultants, RPOs, and assessor C3PAOs. A3 creates a roadmap for each cybersecurity requirement and helps break things down step by step. Please visit cyberdatainteligence.com forward slash A3. That's a really important thing, too, because, you know, a lot of assessors may have very different opinions about what they think is, you know, pass or fail, because that's the other thing, too, is this is pass or fail. So it's not like, well, if it was a scoring thing, at least maybe different people with different perspectives, that might be more acceptable. But because it's pass fail, I think it's going to be very important that everybody's on the same page as to what is pass and what is fail. And, and, you know, there's different ways to assess and there's different areas of focus. You know, one uh, OSC, an organization seeking certification, they might have very different uh, business cases or data flows or types of system components that they use. And that will ultimately uh, affect the depth and coverage that an assessor feels they need to achieve when they're doing an assessment. It's based on their knowledge of, of that environment and, and those use cases. So you really want to understand how assessment teams are going to be focused on certain things. So a highway guide, imagine if it's sort of like a templated way 
for C3 PAOs or assessment teams to pre-communicate, here's where we tend to focus based on these particular technologies. Here's where we, what we tend to focus on when we think about this industry sector or vertical. It's a very, um, it's a very adaptable structure that you could, you could totally republish or repurpose in different use cases. And I think really what we're hoping for here is it's a way for C3 PAOs to pre-communicate what right looks like from their perspective and in certain situations without ever having met the organization seeking certification because we need a way to sort of get that out there even without violating any conflicts of interest where you're both consulting and assessing. If I can talk about what a successful assessment looks like without having, ever having met you, then I'm not gonna be violating any conflicts of interest rules because I didn't know you. It was, this was just a general conversation. Yeah, and it's also a great guide for the people that are going to be going in and helping the teams get their act together for you know the assessment too, because it's kind of like if nobody's ever taken the exam and all these different people are just really, really smart in this area and they're all trying to teach you, but it's like, well, wait, we're trying to make sure we are going to pass the exam. So we need to hone in because there's so much inclu involved in this whole CMMC. So that's going to be a really, really uh, helpful, helpful, helpful guide. So. Uh, so what are some examples of these critical pieces of evidence? Yeah, so one of the things we want to build early on in developing the highway guide, which is really a series of documents, is, you know, what are some of these high value pieces of evidence, these artifacts that we know, you know, assessors are going to reference over and over and over again. So if we're going to really uh, spend our, our resources and effort in those areas, we're probably going to have more concise assessments, more efficient assessments, all of that. So. Uh, you know, this, this kind of feels like cheating, but I'll just say it up front, you know, the system security plan is an obvious choice here, uh, you know, because it's supposed to describe how you're meeting all of your requirements, uh, you know. So if you, if you haven't already done this, uh, I really recommend that organizations look at their system security plan and make sure that under each of the requirements that you have to meet, whether it's NIST 800-171 requirements or CMMC practices, that you're taking the time under each one of those practices to identify and list all the policies and procedures and work constructions and things like that that are actually used to satisfy the requirement. So that, that acts as a jumping off point for uh, exploring other documents. So we really want the SSP itself to sort of act as an index of everything you're doing in the organization. Um, I would say that another uh, critical piece of evidence is actually going to be an org chart. So if we think about what we were talking about earlier, assigned roles and responsibilities, understanding the reporting chains and the chains of command in an organization is it's just really important. So if I'm an assessor and I need to quickly do a sanity check on who I should talk to next or who I should expect to hear from. So if manager uh, A says, I delegated this to you know subordinate X, and I can see that in the org chart that that helps me understand how people are being assigned out work to do and ultimately who's responsible and accountable and all of that. You know, if we're thinking about, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, another thing that really comes up a lot is, is system inventories, right? That's a big one. Uh, you know, a lot of these um, assessment procedures that assessors are going to build for themselves and use, it involves sampling. Right. So I'm not going to assess every single system. If I've got hundreds of systems, I'm going to I'm going to come up with a sampling method where I'm going to grab some of them and use them as an example, example of everything, you know, because we don't have time to touch every single system. So th the last thing you want to have is uh, an assessor assessing a system that isn't actually in the boundary. It shouldn't have been in the sampling. And so if I've got a, a system inventory that includes things like, you know, serial numbers and machine names or or installed software and things like that, um, operating systems and patch levels, that's going to allow me as an assessor to sample just enough systems to really represent sort of the, the all of the different variety of things that are in place. So I can I can look at just a minimum number of systems to really get you know, the depth and breadth I need for, for everything that's in the environment. So that level of detail in an inventory is, is really important. It's, it's going to allow me to build a cross-section of sampled systems. 
you know, there, there's other examples I'm sure we could give, but, um, you know, I, I'll wait until some more of, of my fellow provisional assessors or C3PAO organizations or licensed training providers have all had a chance to weigh in and what matters most to them, because we really do want something like the highway these lists of, of high value artifacts to be a consensus effort. We don't want it to be, you know, any one person's opinion. <laughs> Exactly, because that's how we get, get into trouble when we start taking one person's opinion and going with it. But I was just going to add there that by taking that org chart and taking the system's inventory, that's also going to help the OSC get themselves organized. So when they're looking at that org chart and they're going through different things, they're going to say, now, who is this assigned to? Here's the org chart. Who are we assigning it to to make sure that that's actually getting done when you're getting things organized? Oh, 100 percent. And I think that a lot of organizations don't have a strong handle on how much work needs to be scheduled and who's going to do it. Uh, if you know who's going to be assigned something and what they're going to perform against, now you can start to think about capacity planning. So uh, I keep noticing that our system administrator keeps, you know, we're assigning them a lot of tasks with all, all the same due date. So there's going to be a log jam there. So what can I do to redistribute some of that workload or maybe um, bring in a third party service provider for a limited project to sort of push through that bandwidth constraint? Uh, that that really helps you see from a resource planning perspective, again, at CMMC maturity level three, uh, how I'm going to get through some of those those bandwidth limitations as well. Very good. Very good. Well, is there anything else you want to uh, this was awesome information. Is there anything else you want to throw out there before we go? You know, just if there's one encouragement uh, that I can offer to anybody who's looking at the assessment process, you know, there's these three methods that assessors use. They examine documents, they interview people and they, they test things. So they ask for practical demonstrations. The more that you can document in an examinable way up front, I think that's gonna have a significant positive impact on the cost of future assessments, because that is really the most cost-effective way to get information into the hands of an assessor so that they can start to create findings. So, you know, if, if, I, if I could <laughs> offer an informal encouragement to anybody that's out there who's implementing I would seek to have one piece of examinable information for every practice objective that's that's in the entire model. If you can do that, you're probably going to have a much more concise and efficient and cost effective assessment process. Okay, good advice. Good advice. All right. Well, this was really, really awesome. Thank you so much. This is very important stuff that people may not have thought of. So. You know, not that we don't have enough to think about with CMMC, we got to think about the pitfalls here. So <laughs> appreciate your time, Ryan. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure. Hopefully people get value out of the conversation we had today and uh, we can keep these conversations going. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you everybody for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the next episode of 123 CMMC. Take care until then. Bye-bye.